Ravish Bari. But later Hari Krishna contacted me and then said it was not that clear. He told me that it is better if you do one problem in each category. I have divided it into four categories. And so Hari asked me, and of course he asked Naina also personally, that please do one problem in each category. So Naina is going to do that. And before that I want to remind you the classification. So I take a couple of minutes and then just remind you the classification. So I thought that Naina himself can do, but he said, okay, he asked me to do it. So let me just recall that any problem in classical mechanics for which you need to find the constructed advantage, can be categorized as so let's say you have a system and a phrase and system can have two types point mass system or rigid one And frame, you can have an inertial frame or a non-inertial frame. In particular, I want to call the rotational frame. Okay, so the, the classification I am making is for the rotational frame. If it is a non-inertial frame of a different type, then we have a straight forward. Uh, we are finding uh, a fictitious force and then. So, if I have a point mass, if I have a point mass with xyz coordinates, then the kinetic energy of the point mass system in the inertial plane is obtained as half m into x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square. If you have some generalized coordinates, then you use x, y, z in terms of the generalized coordinates and then substitute them here, you will get the kinetic energy in terms of the generalized And potential energy, V is equal to V R, R, R is x, y, z. And you write L as P minus V. This is very simple because most of the point mass systems we have studied or we have done these problems. Now, if you have this point mass in the rotational plane, then I first ask you to find out the velocity of the point mass as dr by dt plus omega plus r, where omega is the angular velocity of the rotational plane. Okay, dr by dt plus omega plus r. And then find the kinetic energy as half m v dot d. So use this v to find out the kinetic energy. The velocity is the rotation. Velocity of the particle as seen in the rotation. Not as seen in the rotation, as seen from the inner circle. Okay, so this is the velocity of the particle in the rotational plane. This is the effect of rotation. The last. Okay. <coughs> then potential is same. Okay, so I am sorry, I think I must write this as small v or something. Small v, small v. And this capital V is V of R. And then write the grand as P minus V. You are going to do the same thing afterwards. So only in computing the kinetic energy, there is a difference. Now, if you have a rigid body, then I said that you decompose the motion in terms of the motion of the center of the mass of the rigid body and rotational motion about the center of the mass of the rigid body. So, you can write on the kinetic energy as kinetic energy of the center of mass plus 
rotational plan. Okay. And kinetic energy at the center of mass is as usual half total mass of the system into RCM dot dot RC. Where RCM is the position of the center of mass. RCM dot RCM. And rotational kinetic energy is usually little bit involved, and you will learn more about it when you are doing the tip body dynamics in this December workshop. But let me tell you that you have to write this as angular velocity vector omega transpose into momentum inertia tensor I into angular velocity vector omega. Okay, this is what we would have called if you are rotating about an axis half i omega square. But if you are rotating about a point, then moment of inertia becomes the second rank tensor and your rotational kinetic energy is given by this. Now potential energy is going to depend only on RCM because the external force acts as if the whole mass is concentrated in the center of mass. So the potential so in rigid body dynamics, center of mass is like a point mass. External force acts only on that point mass. A additional thing is only this rotational kinetic energy. So L is equal to E minus. If you have a rigid body in a non or a rotational frame, then you must calculate Vcm as Vr Cm by dt plus omega cross Rcm and then calculate Pcm as half m Vcm dot Vcm. Just like how you do for point mass, here center of your mass is the point mass, you do the same thing here. And rotational kinetic energy is same as here half omega transpose inertia transfer omega and V is also same if it depends on RCM and then L is equal to Okay, so this is the four types of problems. Any given problem in classical mechanics is sure to fall in one of these problems. Okay, but if there is some other acceleration that your uh, frame is undergoing other than rotation, then you have to deal with that acceleration. One comment I wanted to make about one problem which Maina has done in the morning, this is he has considered two, uh, two masses in a gravitational field. And then he finally wrote down an expression for the potential energy as Lagrangian. Lagrangian had a dependence on Z. Correct? So Z is not cyclic here. If I confine only the interaction between the particles, X, Y, Z all are cyclic. So I cannot, I cannot uh, take X equal to 0, Y equal to 0, Z equal to 0. I have to explicitly deal with the motion of Z. Okay, so we should not go and consider a center of mass frame this case because the center of mass itself is accelerated. So we have to keep this explicitly and solve that problem. Okay? So I think uh, I will hand over to Naina this classification.